Hey, Moral Gamers, welcome back. So I haven't done a gamer speak in a long time, and my wife and I were actually having an interesting conversation. Um, we, we were just playing Scourge, and yeah, you can see from the video right here that this game's uh, interesting. Doing a lot of spider killing, stuff like that. It's not spiders, they're scorpions. Yes, we will argue that at another point. No, scorpions. But, so we were talking about this. This is a four-player game, and it's four-player... Um, it's four player online and see both of us kind of grew up mostly myself I grew up uh, when game systems were only two player but then when she was coming up she had something called does anyone remember an N64 yeah the N64 basically back in the day when that was that really standardized at least I believe that standardized four players per console you know, because you had, you had Goldeneye, you had Perfect Dark. You had a billion different racing ones that were four-player. Turok, yeah, tons of just different good four-player games. What was your favorite on that one? Four-player? What your favorite N64 game? My favorite N64 game was Legends of Dragoon. Wait, no, that's PlayStation 1. Sorry. N64 would be Mario, right? Mario Kart Racing? So you're a Mario Kart fan? Oh, yeah. I had fun with that one. I hated the N64 I Mario Kart. I love Mario Kart. Well, it was the first game I ever played that I did semi-decently at. And I do mean very semi on the Cause, decent. Because you could throw a stinking blue turtle shell at someone and start winning again. No, it had nothing to do with the weaponizing. A lot of times we played without the weaponizing because people would just get ticked off at each other. It was it was the that it was fun and I liked the backgrounds and I could do it decently well compared to to other racing games where I really sucked and ran into walls constantly and you couldn't run well in some areas you could but for the most part you couldn't run off the walls particularly <laughs> on the rainbow road which I enjoyed immensely oh you mean the um the uh, road to Asgard sure <laughs> okay um I don't know I don't like the trend of modern game systems where it's just hey one maybe two people tops per console. What are your thoughts on that? And not just because we got five kids. Well, that is a big part of it. Like, we have kids. I would like to be able to play games with the kids instead of everyone isolating themselves in their own room to play games. It's, they like to game, so let's do it together as a family instead of saying, no games, you have to spend time with me doing boring grown-up stuff. Come on, seriously? <laughs> One of my co-workers um, actually uh, takes and he he has a computer for each of his kids, and that's how they game together. I don't know. What would you think about doing that? Get each of the kids a laptop and whatnot, and over time sinking five grand so everyone could game together? That seems awfully expensive, and I'm not sure what I think about kids having their own laptops. There's just too much stuff they could do without my supervision. Yeah. <laughs> So, what was your most recent multiplayer favorite game besides you hitting me with the stick and how to survive? Trine. Trine. Why Trine? Trine 2, in particular. Because I love the music, and I like the gameplay, and I like the characters, I like the story. I love the graphics and the artwork in it. It's just a good game. I like it a lot. See, I was much a fan of Buzz, because you could have eight people playing at once. Buzz is a good party game. You can't use Trend as a party game. Buzz oh, is the best party game, in my opinion, because... And Bomberman. No, I like Buzz better. Okay. I like Buzz more. Why? Bomberman takes a little more... Um, being a little more versatile with games and gaming s stuff gaming equipment, how to do games and moving and stuff. Mm -hmm. Whereas Buzz, it's like a button and you press it. And we've had four generations playing Buzz at one time in one place. I mean, come on, how often does that happen with a video game in this day and age? Very true, very true. Um, so we're going to have to bring her to a close here. Uh, but <clears throat> if, if you could direct... If you could direct the gaming industry, what would you want to see more of? More family-friendly multiplayer games. You mean local couch co-op yes. or couch play? Couch co-op. 
and ones that you can do a, what do you call that, when you connect two game systems together, a local LAN? System or link. Or system a, link or something like or that. Or LAN play, yeah. LAN play, do that, because, I mean, face it, I don't really expect them to make any games above four players, so with five kids and two adults playing, that they you're, you need two systems. It's just... And trying to get more than four players on a TV screen, unless you have a humongous TV screen, is just annoying. Well, the average person now has a 32-inch, whereas back in the day, we only had 15. And our yeah, 15 but, inches, we were playing Halo on four players local. But the graphics were hard, and I remember 15-inch trying to play Halo on it, and it was annoying, because you couldn't see anything. It's frustrating. Okay. And then you always have people going, he's screen cheating! Well, I'm looking at 15 square inches. It's impossible not to! 15 square inches. Yes. <laughs> well, that's all the time we have for today. Thanks for joining us. Uh, this has been a quick uh, gamer speak, game chat type thing. Don't know what we're going to call these segments, but... Um, Moral Gamer, moralgamer.com. Like, subscribe, comment, share. And we'd love to hear from you in the comments as well.